and Patrice Nordi is the managing partner of Fiber Novo. As you hear from, from, from Ferona, so you understand Patrice Nordi. Actually, he has started his first uh, digital venture in 1998. Yes. Yeah. And he also has been worked for 25 years um, as the digital marketing um, for 25 years. And then also at the most important part of you, I sense your background, you know, is very, very powerful. But I'm just wondering, do you have any secret? How come you can become such a powerful person? Okay, so, so first thank you very much for your invitation. Uh, and I feel very honored to be part of the Toastmaster Club that mm -hmm. I totally discovered today. Uh, and I was really curious for a long time to understand you know, how you are helping people to uh, mm -hmm. give public speaking yes. uh, mm -hmm. uh, and also to develop confidence and I really feel that's uh, something which is very important. I could see from my own uh, uh, career that mm -hmm. how it uh, helped me to build up a bit more confidence. I, I, I did not have always a lot of confidence, uh, mm -hmm. even today, <laughs> to speak in front of people uh, and to, to, uh, to be interviewed. But uh, so very happy to be here to share mm -hmm. with you. Uh, I hope you can learn a bit about this conversation and I also hope I can learn from you and I can learn from the upcoming stage with all the other speakers yeah. coming, you know, uh, to present some topics. Yeah, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, uh, to reply to your question, so I never really thought about being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's uh, like probably a lot of entrepreneurs, I think it was just a consequence of, you know, the way, uh, the decision that you take along your career. And maybe later you realize that maybe, okay, you become an entrepreneur, you are an entrepreneur and uh, you, you, uh, you, you start to have, uh, you know, you set back and you realize, okay, what is it to be an entrepreneur and I'm, uh, am, I, am I good at what I'm doing and uh, can I progress? So mm -hmm. I think it's something which is a journey. Um, and I had a trigger point, a, a pivotal moment. Okay, yeah, share with uh, us. Mm -hmm. Where actually everything changed, I feel, in my, in my, in my, in my life professional life but uh, in my whole <laughs> life um, so when I was a student uh, so I'm an economist and I was uh, studying uh, economy and uh, in my last year so as you said 1998 quite mm. some time ago um, and at that time so we had a new trend coming over uh, and the trend was called internet and uh, so a lot of debate you know about mm -hmm. in, in the society about is it a big trend is this trend going to last or not um, and I was really impressed uh, and really curious about understanding how eventually internet could not only um, be something for, for, for the year but could actually change uh, you know, the whole economy mm -hmm. and the whole life. So this bring me with two other students. Uh, not so that's the first, that's actually the first venture you have started. Yeah, we started, we started uh, very naively. <laughs> A company, a company as a platform, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the idea was not to make money or to become an entrepreneur. The idea was to have a platform, a vehicle where we could understand better mm -hmm. what was about to come. So we used mm -hmm. that company to interview people mm -hmm. online. So, so it's we, an online media platform? It was an online media. Okay. So, uh, mm -hmm. so yeah, so it was an online media mm -hmm. and because we didn't know, and uh, but we saw that some people in the industry would have some ideas. Mm -hmm. So we started to uh, to uh, interview people. Uh, random so people, <laughs> random people, what is the entrepreneurs, what you business person, mm -hmm. uh, people with academic profile, uh, okay. researcher. Mm -hmm. We are reading some books, and then we are contacting people. You know, writing the books. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's how I started my <laughs> professional career. So uh, having a company before being employed. Is uh, that profit or non for non profit? Uh, actually, we wanted to create value. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the idea, because again, I'm an economist, and we are very interested about how information technology, we're talking about technology, but it's actually information technology, most of it, yes. uh, mm -hmm. is actually creating value. And our goal was not to make money. Okay. It was mm -hmm. to create value out of just information. Mm -hmm. you know, companies are producing products, they're producing services. Mm -hmm. We saw that, okay, we, we are going to try to demonstrate that we can create value out of mm -hmm. extracting information. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was uh, the, the ambition. Oh, I see. Yeah. So starting from non-profit ideas, but mm -hmm. end up creating value. So you end up like create 
profits for your company. I understand your company, uh, the net economic has been acquired by the um, like famous TV, uh, French TV group, mm -hmm. M6, in 2008. Yeah. Exactly, That's yeah. quite successful. Yeah, but again, um, okay, I had to continue to work after that, yeah. so <laughs> it was not a life changer. Um, mm -hmm. I think the value out of it was not really the cash value mm -hmm. of, of this uh, exit. It was really the value that it bring me and my teammate personally. Uh, and what I, I, I learned through that. Uh, and the fact that up to now, uh, mm -hmm. I'm still working on uh, innovation, internet, and, and all of this uh, information technology as a topic. Uh, and I'm still uh, very excited about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, I think, you know, as your background, you mentioned, you know, um, as entrepreneur is a sequence. But actually, he worked, you know, I think from your background, <laughs> I understand you work for a multinational company. Uh, which has 190,000 employees and also across 65 countries and with 150 billion revenue. That's pretty impressive. And you also mentioned, you know, you created three companies along the way. So that's kind of your hobby, be an entrepreneur. Yeah, I think it's, again, it's a consequence of uh, okay. choices. Um, um, and again, I think I realize, and even now that, you know, people project me this mm -hmm. image of uh, entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the things I realized again through that first experience is that maybe there's another way to make a career which is not just to be employed mm -hmm. or to wait to find the perfect job uh, that given by a company. Maybe you can feed yourself with a perfect job. Uh, and actually there's more chance that you will have a perfect job if you design by yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if you can make a living out of it, you get free. So, and you can decide to be employed or not, it's, it's a choice, but you are free. So I think this is uh, something that uh, was really important for me. So then, yes, I, I work in, uh, in, in this bank, BNP Paribas. Um, along this time, because I stayed 11 years, uh, I think I, I was employed, but I was acting also as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. because I, I had to create uh, different businesses mm -hmm. uh, inside that group. So, Eventually, things never change much, either, even I was on the entrepreneur side and launching myself a business or working for a company. Uh, I think I never tried to compromise about what I wanted to do and what I wanted to discover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's important. I think you mentioned uh, innovative you know, or innovation mm -hmm. quite often. You also kind of focus on that. How could you create or force, you know, kind of like those cultural innovation in your company? You know, yeah. kind of any experience, so strategies? Innovation is a, is a, is a strange animal. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can really describe what is innovation. Mm. Uh, and innovation is something that does not exist yet, right? Mm. It's something in the future and nobody has photo from the future or, you know, uh, can have data or interview clients from the future. So that's what it is about innovation. So it's a very complex animal. Um, and the other thing is uh, you cannot really decide. So, but it's very powerful and many companies actually survive because they're able to innovate. And even us, you know, as human beings, you know, we can survive because we can evolve and, uh, and, and innovate. So, um, I, I realized also at some point that whatever strategy you put in place, it's not enough. Uh, and innovation is probably much more about the culture of innovation or mm. the corporate culture you can bring into a company than the strategy. Uh, and there's a very famous um, writer, we, we call him, uh, call him the, the father of strategy. Uh, you probably heard of him, Michael Porter. Michael Porter. Uh, mm -hmm. Like very famous uh, American uh, think, thinker. And uh, so he's a father of strategy, he wrote so many books about strategy. And one day he woke up and uh, he had this uh, saying that uh, culture eats um, strategy at breakfast. So recognizing that's you know, the power of strategy, of a culture, so within a company, to drive uh, business and to drive innovation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Any kind of like strategy you have been using from yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> for that? So culture, so we try to cultivate in a, in a company, and I, I bring one of my colleagues here in front of, okay. of, of us. Um, we can interview later. You can interview later, but uh, um, you cannot 
decide on the culture, you have to leave the culture. If something mm. that have to be concrete. So uh, if I want to summarize, because it's a big topic, uh, mm -hmm. and how to foster innovation and a culture of innovation, I would say that you need space. So you need um, to give people space to grow. That's the first thing, because innovation is within people and we need to give them that space. Uh, so meaning ownership, mm -hmm. responsibility, uh, a voice to be heard uh, in the company. Uh, mm -hmm. So they can take that space and grow. Then uh, they need a physical space that also nurture innovation. Uh, reason why in uh, our company, when we design our office, uh, we didn't design it as an office. We designed it as a space to work, mm -hmm. where uh, our employees work, our clients come to work and co-design a product with us. Our partners are coming and we even, uh, even open the, uh, the, the, the company uh, to external you know, events. Mm. Uh, I've been there. I like it. <laughs> so we have a, we designed the space uh, to have a lot of different settings where you can have meetings in a different type of meeting room, different type of position, etc. So where you can again foster some uh, creativity uh, mm. and, uh, and and different perspective. So that's the space to work. And then there's another space which is a space to think. <laughs> Uh, because we could actually in many companies we have to achieve tasks and the world is limited to the task or the work to be produced or deliverables to be produced but it's we need to give uh, additional space to go beyond that and to have the time also to think about what we are doing why we are doing it can we do it differently and then we create a possibility to innovate and to be more creative. So the, mm. the, the space to think for people is so very important. Mm. So leave space for employees either physically, also mentally, you know, also... Space to grow, space, space to, to work, space work. to think, yeah. Okay, that's important. Three space, remember. <laughs> okay, do you have any challenging, you know, of course, managing people and a big entrepreneur can be very challenging. Any challenge or difficulty you have encountered which makes you grow, you know, stronger, yeah, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, the, the question of challenges is uh, always very interesting. Mm -hmm. And on my journey to trying to understand what is an entrepreneur, I realized that actually challenges are the drugs of uh, entrepreneurs. They actually like challenges, they create challenges. They don't want to, uh, they don't try to avoid challenges. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so they run after challenges. Yes, so the question is not how along the way we try to avoid a big change and go through it and then it's good. Uh, we build up, I think, the journey by eventually having big dreams or big dreams that are too big to compare to what we can really achieve and then we still go for that. Um, and we try to do things differently than maybe uh, the main, the mainstream uh, thing. So, so that's, that's a life of changes. So, so there is changes every day. <laughs> Uh, and we like it. Uh, I think that's what makes us move forward. So that's, that's maybe a, a fair thing. Um, so I have a lot of challenges every day. Uh, maybe I if you, you yeah. want a, a precise example? Yeah, or? maybe you can okay. give a specific example, most yeah. difficult one we want to listen. <laughs> uh, I don't know which one is the most uh, difficult, but uh, I, re I do remember one uh, where I couldn't sleep for days, so I think it was very <laughs> difficult on that one. I was. Uh, um, I was a junior consultant uh, within this bank, BNP Paribas, and uh, we were actually setting up the internet strategy, we don't have any strategy. Uh, and I was doing the auditing of all our uh, internet assets, so internet sites, website and internet websites. Uh, and after months I had 800 intranet websites and more than 400 intranet, uh, in, um, internet uh, websites. Uh, so it was, it was a mess. It was a real mess and we had to actually optimize all of it to, to come up with a strategy. We had all the technology possible and it was, even for, for, for clients coming online, they were lost. Uh, but the problem is how to solve something that you cannot see. Because the complexity of showing to the management those virtual elements uh, that were intertwined, interconnected, the journey or the, the maze for user that was produced by that was impossible to visualize. So I scratched my head for days <laughs> about, uh, and I pushed my PPT skills at the maximum and uh, 
to see how I could actually in one page show the problem so we could start to solve it. But without showing it, <laughs> we couldn't start to solve it. Uh, so that, that's, that was a very big uh, challenge. Ultimately, uh, I found a solution by going to discuss with some uh, tech people uh, in, in the company. And we actually had the idea to download all those websites, to analyze all the links, and to create a kind of uh, interactive mapping system where we could zoom in, zoom out, etc. And it was the first time we were using such kind of um, visualization tools, which now are pretty common, but I think it was uh, maybe 17 years ago. So it was really advanced at the time, but it was the only solution uh, for us to really visualize uh, the problem. And then uh, this uh, took me like uh, several years of wow. working mm -hmm. to work on that with different parties in the group and to have a, a better strategy. Mm, made it something visible from something invisible. That's really yeah, innovative. Um, so you talk about people because you solve the problem, you talk with the tech guys, you know. I, I remember you know, you're, you're like consulting company with innovation. I can imagine, you know, in your company they have so many creative people, very unique. How could you imagine them? How could you promo, like, promote them? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, so management is a journey, it's never mm -hmm. finished. Uh, the, the first thing which is important is uh, we don't own anyone. I always say that to my mm -hmm. team, I don't owe you, you are free. Uh, I want you to be here because you want to be here. So managing doesn't mean that we <coughs> own people, right? Um, and if this is the case or they are forced to do something, they might not be the best of uh, who they are or who they can be. So um, one of the things with management, um, and I realized also this on the way, is at first I tried to be a nice manager and I saw that being a good manager was to be a nice manager. I realized that's not the case at all. The yes, good you manager- You're not a nice manager. <laughs> uh, maybe, but that's not the primary objective. Yes. The primary objective of a manager is to extract the maximum potential of people you work with. That's and true. if there's something that they can uh, give you credit about later and year after is if they really have been pushed at a certain potential. And if you look at sport, if you look at artists, none of the coach are nice people, right? So don't push too much, you're going to be too tired, etc. Uh, so I think that's the same. Uh, we are uh, also trying to push ourselves at, a, at our maximum potential. And for that, uh, we need to, to have a lot of work and sweat, etc. Et and that's, that's what it is to be a good manager. Um, the other thing is you realize that eventually if you, are, um, if you understand what is to be a manager or your role or your objective, it's not enough. <laughs> uh, you also need to be a leader. And some leaders are already pretty bad managers as well, but they are very good leaders. Uh, and leader is another thing. Uh, and this is more into having people who are willing to follow you because mm, they feel that true. you have a vision, you see something other people don't see and you have a strong drive and they want to be part of it. So that's another element which I think is very important um, and those, you're never a good manager or a good leader. It's every day if Know, uh, every day you are uh, doing this well or not and many days you succeed many days you fail there's a lot of days I, I fail to be a good manager <laughs> a lot of days I fail to to bring the vision and 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 to embark my people how could you people. bring the vision to people because you need to see it or how could you make it concrete yeah so uh, the first thing is to share <laughs> yeah, I mean to share uh, what is in what's what's in your head um, um, and the second thing is to be uh, true about what you know and what you don't know. Mm. Uh, be authentic. To be authentic because if people expect you to solve everything and to know everything about everything, they will, it will be deceptive <laughs> at some point for sure. So uh, you also need to share your doubts or doubts about what you are trying to solve, right? And, and they can be also part of the solution. So I think that's also very something which is important. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if I may, a last element, which I think is really powerful when you do that, mm -hmm. the more you give context, the less you have to give tasks to do, right? The task will be deducted by your team. 
and eventually they will know more than you what task to achieve to uh, reach out a certain goal, right? So mm. sharing a lot about what you think and give the maximum <laughs> context and objectives. Uh, mm. I think it's uh, um, give, them, give yeah. them direction to where to yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I have limited time, so we have a last question for you. Basically, is, um, you know, audience I here, I really come to you to, to get to know you. Do you have any advice you want to give to the audience today? Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought you had a question about people who are looking for a job and advice for that. <laughs> yeah, I don't I know thinking which about question you prefer. Because the AI, you know, everything. So people may lose a job. I was wondering, do you have any advice to anyone? You know, who is looking for a job? Who is looking for a job or who yeah. ever looking for a change? Okay, I can go quick on both. Okay. So uh, first, because as you uh, we discussed a bit before, uh, there's also a time where it's not so easy to get a job and people are out of job. And I've been asked about you know, what advice you would give to those people. I think something which uh, is a fact, uh, and I'm an employer uh, and I see that around is company like to recruit people who already have a job. And the same people who is, which is, who is out of job is regarded as maybe having less value or most, less attractive. So how to break that cycle when you're out of job? So make yourself active, go to Toastmaster, last, uh, launch project. Join us. You know, do, do, it's not because you are not on a payroll somewhere that you are not active and you're not building things. Uh, so don't yeah, be uh, regarded as someone who is you know, uh, in between things. Uh, never stay in between and then you will see the attractiveness will be stronger. So that's for the people who do not have a job. The other very general um, advice I would, I, would, uh, I would give to the audience here, which uh, I guess uh, have some entrepreneurs and I guess people with a lot of dreams, uh, is to never give up or compromise on this. Uh, um, and because when you start to compromise, uh, that the beginning of going to a direction uh, that might not grow yourself, and if there's something we cannot really, we never can change is time. The, 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 the best value of, of cash is, is time, right? Mm, you cannot replay true. your life. So, so compromising might bring you, and I, uh, or not compromising might bring you into a very difficult journey. Like you wonder why I go in a such difficult <laughs> path. And I wonder myself a lot of time why I make uh, my life so difficult. Uh, but it's, I think it's a result about not trying to compromise, about trying to do something I really want. You, okay. right. mm -hmm. So yeah, that's my advice, mm -hmm. if you can, uh, is trying not to compromise about what you really want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> because we have only one <laughs> game to play. Right? Yeah, life is short. Do what you really love to do. Yeah. <laughs>